Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and I did a video about a year ago about how I fixed the Virtual Boy. Now, since that year, we've changed the way that we fix Virtual Boys, and I want to show you guys how I fix Virtual Boys now. In that video, I, I really touched on the problem with the Virtual Boy and what goes wrong with it and why it needs to be fixed. So if you want to go check that out, that would be awesome. Um, and then also you can see the old method and see how much harder that was than this. This way is significantly easier than that way. So you can see the progression that we've made. Also, uh, really, really important note about this fix. And this is what I'm going to show in the video is I'm going to show you a perfect one first. So it's going to be this is how you fix it and this is what happens when it goes perfectly. And then after that, I'm going to show you, this is what happens is as you're soldering, if something goes wrong, how to fix your own mistake. Because I made, we've made plenty of mistakes doing these and then you fix your own mistake. So then I'll show you that. And then the third and final thing in the video is a whole complete new method to fixing the Virtual Boy. Now I'm not going into showing you how to do that. That will be coming in a later video, but that's a great method in case this method doesn't work. And uh, you can actually destroy, I'll, I'll, let's just start and I'll get into all of that. So our main goal is to solder this ribbon cable to this PCB board here. Now Nintendo glued the ribbon cable to the PCB board, so over time the glue wears out, lifts up, and it doesn't really have a good connection anymore, so you really need to solder it so that this red LED can shine properly and you can actually see out of both lenses. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna secure it down by just taping the entire ribbon cable down very securely using some sort of uh, tape like blue tape or electrical tape. Then you add flux. If you had too much flux, it could actually get inside the lens of the LED and then you're gonna have to clean it and it's gonna be a problem. It's not fun. So now what I like to do is only on the bottom, you can see where the bottom pins were different from the ribbon cable. I only like to move horizontally when I'm touching the bottom pins. If you move horizontally on the, on the ribbon cable pins, you can move those pins and then they'll be all out of line. So be very careful not to move those horizontally. However, it's really nice to tin horizontally on the bottom half. So we're just getting the bottom part tinned. That's our main goal for right now. And by using the flux and just moving solder around it, you're good. And then after they're tinned, what I like to do is I like to flow the solder upwards and by flowing it upwards you're actually pushing the solder up the PCB board, up the traces and then it's getting underneath the ribbon cable and that's where you're going to connect the ribbon cable to the PCB. And if you saw, the ribbon cable is actually kind of lifting up and that's where this step comes in. Where what we're doing is we're actually pushing the ribbon cable down to the PCB board again and while we're doing this, we're pushing it down so it makes a solid connection to the PCB board, but the plastic is melting. So the next aspect of this is cleaning up the plastic. And if you also see, there's these little holes on the PCB board where the screws go. Solder likes to fall in there, and you're just gonna have to remove that later on before you test it. So we're now flowing down again. And as you see all this black goop, this black goop is um, melted plastic, so once, when it's hot and melted, you can take a Q-tip with isopropyl alcohol and you can wipe that melted plastic away and you kind of got to clean it up while you're doing it and then very, very gently. And if you notice the tip I'm using, it's nice and long. It's like your standard tip, but a lot longer, almost more like a needle tip, but not full needle. So we're using that because of its length. And now we're able to just wipe gently down and just continue to wipe down and then we're gonna remove all that plastic. And sometimes if there's plastic stuck on the pins, what I like to do is add a little bit of solder, and I add a little bit of that solder, and that will actually help to remove some of the plastic on the pins, which we'll end up cleaning up later. So I called this the, the perfect repair because this is how we do it. This fixes it, and they work great. They work fantastic. Here we are cleaning it up. And I'm going to do this exact same repair a little later on, but I'm gonna mess it up. 
because I make mistakes because human you know what I mean I make mistakes all the time but I like to fix my mistakes so I'm going to show you how I fix my mistakes with this particular um, with this particular repair and then after that I'm even going to show you another method that we have in the works and we're going to make video about later on down the road in case you completely destroy all the ribbon cables which can happen so now after it's all cleaned we're just going to do our best to reflow each pin and then remove any of that leftover plastic after reflowing each pin so now this is done so the last step to do is to meter it out. So we're gonna use a multimeter to check continuity for the entire uh, ribbon cable, and then we're gonna plug it in. And then I'm gonna show you the mistakes, the mistake ones. So if, uh, if you guys know some, if you guys like this stuff, uh, feel free to check out the rest of my channel. There's tons and tons of stuff on, on here like this, and a lot more stuff similar to this that you may enjoy. And uh, I, I got a lot of videos on here, so feel free to go check them out. If you know somebody who this would help, show them this video. If you know somebody who's got a virtual boy, let them see this. Show them my other video so that that way they know because that's the purpose of all this. And there I just did three in 15 seconds because I sped the video up. And that was just a segue into this is my mistake. This is the one I made a mistake on. So I'm going to show you that this is exactly the same method essentially the first thing I did wrong was it was too much flux you see it all bubbling so that's why I said earlier use a little bit less flux so there's too much flux I'm still doing the same back and forth horizontal method only on the bottom and then on the top I start to flow down my problem was I flowed down on the top one a little too early and because there's too much flux I'm not cleaning it as often which I should be and then most importantly is I'm not cleaning my tip. And as you see right there, I just bridged it because my tip had solder on it. And when I went to flow the solder on top, it tin or it bridged it. Because I wasn't cleaning it enough, a little too much flux. So those were the problems. I didn't properly tin all the ones on the bottom. So if you watch this one and then you go back and you watch the first one, you're gonna see exactly what not to do. And if you do accidentally do this, I'm going to show you exactly what to do to fix it. And if you notice there's a trace all the way to the right that got yanked off, the trace is all the way to the right, they don't do anything so it doesn't matter. Now right here because I tried to flow the solder down, I couldn't so I'm using some wick to remove it. With wick, when you want to remove solder, you literally, you just put the wick right on top of the solder you want to remove, heat up the wick, the wick has flux in it which will absorb the solder and suck it in and then you can just lift it up and it'll be gone however that just removed the majority so now I'm trying to just flow it down again it's usually what I do if I bridge something is I just flow it away from the connector piece so after flowing it didn't work wick didn't work so now I need to go in manually with tweezers hold down each pin and then try my best to realign the pins that have moved because when they got bridged they got moved as you see the pin right by the tip of the iron is actually underneath another um, trace or pin so I'm just holding each one down with the tweezers and just going by and manually flowing each one back into place it took me a little while so there we are and here we are for this I got actually some big stuff in store for this. If everything messes up completely, I'll make a video about this where uh, you can actually just hardwire the entire thing together. I recommend this if you mess up the ribbon cables and you don't have one and you need to do that. So thank you guys very, very much for watching. Thank you for checking out all of my other videos, showing my videos to your friends, checking out the website, uh, posting the stuff you think is cool on social media, all that kind of stuff. Thank you guys very, very much for all of that. And uh, stay tuned for this one in the future, and I'll see you next time.